You're on. Hi everybody, I'm Prissy Brown. Charlie did the first part of the video uh, about Nabisco and I'm going to continue on in this in topics talking about country store collectibles. Uh, I've always loved collecting. I collect antique Santas as well as Nabisco, although Nabisco is my favorite, and I also collect antique uh, Boyd's Bears. Uh, we have country store in every room our, of our house, predominantly Nabisco, and I'd like to show you some items first. The first one I want to show you is the box of You Need a Biscuit, which is the first cracker that they ever developed. It put crackers on the map and it took them out of the barrel and put them in the box where they remain fresh in 1899. Yeah. The second box I would like to show you is the most rarest box that th has show ever me, been developed. Me, it's an inner seal, which is the very first box that uh, seal of the company. It's the oldest box known to exist. You need a ginger wafer, and it's the only one that we know of right now. It was put out in 1898, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, my main topic today I'd like to discuss is reproductions. You find mostly reproductions in paper, ephemera. Uh, it can be in the form of uh, labels. It can be in the form of trolley cards uh, and any anything paper. that's a paper, uh, which which is uh, basically the main thing that reproductions are. Uh, things we know are fake. I'd like to point out some to you now. This first is an American Biscuit Manufacturing Company orange wafer label. Just because uh, we are, uh, we collect National Biscuit Company, a lot of people are taken by this, these these products and these labels. That some of them are so well made and so well printed that even they are uh, fooled by by the the label itself. We bought this many many years ago on eBay when eBay first came about, and we had no idea the picture on the the computer screen looked real, really really good. We fought, we were fooled by this. When we got this, you can absolutely tell it is a fake. There is white showing above where they laid this on top of a uh, paper and took a picture of it. There is a, a tape mark that shows on this copy and the original obviously was very delicate and it cracked in some point in time and they taped it. And it is so well done. well done that it was hard until you got it absolutely in the mail to know that it was a fake. Buyer beware. Buyer beware on these items. Let me show you another one. This was put out for Nabisco. They, they put these out to advertise for the company and this is a, another reproduction as well. Although, although this one shows the date that it was manufactured, and that's 1991. Many times they will not put a date on them that shows they are reproductions, so buyer beware on these items as well. This is a, a little cardboard sign. They also made metal signs but they, and they're porcelain, but they did have a copyright date on them. But many times you'll find items that do not have a copyright date and you have got to be very aware of what you're, you're okay. buying. I would like to show you another piece. And this one is framed. This is a picture of an original oil painting. It hung in the New York offices. It was done by the famous artist Frank Stanley and it is signed. This is a reproduction of that painting. It is a copy. The reason being the original is the same size as this one 
and it is the original was done on canvas it was an oil painting and the reason you can tell this particular item is a reproduction is that it even has the lines of the original canvas on it it has tape marks on it where you can tell it was photographed and put into this frame so we ha we have seen the uh, ori the original oil painting, yeah, yeah. and it is truly gorgeous. But this is a copy of that painting. You will see the tape marks that were on the original, where someone at some point in time had taped on the original, which was a very very bad no no on it. The original sold for $8,000 in an auction in 2006, uh, at, and it belonged to Wayne W. Guest. This is a copy of that painting. Buyer beware. Now, Buyer beware. I would like to show you one other item, and this is truly a fooler. This is a copy of a trolley card. It is a Zuzu trolley card, but it is a reproduction. Now, some might say, how do you know it's a reproduction? It is showing, it It looks beautiful. The colors are vibrant. It ha even has the date here in the corner, and that is of June 19, 1919. People will say, hey, well, how do you know it's a reproduction? Well, this one is framed. It's double matted. It's, it's, it's very hard to tell it is a reproduction. The problem being that when they did these, they do these, they put paper on the back of them, and they frame them just like you would if you had a trolley card. The reason we know this is a copy is that it's too nice. It's too nice. <laughs> the reason I say that is, if you know anything about National Biscuit Company, you know they put out tons and tons of trolley oh, cards, and the majority of them have blemishes on them to show their age. There are usually pinholes. There could be nail holes where they have been nailed to a to a, a wall. The early ones were used after they were, were disposed of. A lot of people took the original trolley cards and nailed them onto walls as insulation and also ceilings in, in, to insulate their homes or businesses or floors. And they will have blemishes on them such as nail holes, pin holes, even little chips out of the cardboard. They were cardboard trolley cards. The backs of them, uh, you will know when I show you some of ours, but this is a reproduction. The reason being is it's too nice. You, you very seldom find a trolley card in excellent condition. And if you went to, uh, a lot of people I know, and we used to go to the Indianapolis ad show, if you saw this hanging in a booth, I would be very questionable whether it is truly an original. They are getting so, there is a, a, a process now, and I like to refer to it as the guilty process, and there is, this is done so perfectly that a buyer with an untrained eye would fall for this as being an original. From and the original. it and is not. This is original. a copy, a very well done copy of an original Zuzu trolley card. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. Now, Let's talking about trolley cards, real thing. let me show you some of the real things. And this way you'll know. We have had many of these for years, and a lot of these have been used, as I said, nailed to the floor, nailed to a ceiling, or nailed to a wall as insulation, or just from wear, normal wear and tear. The first one is uh, put out in September of 28, 1928. It was put out for going back to school. And it shows the books being uh, tied together with the belt like the kids used to do. 
This has, show, has damage, as you can see. It does have nail holes in it, where it has been nailed to either a wall or ceiling or floor. You will see chips out of them. They're, the cardboard at that time is very fragile, and you had to be very, very careful. There's also water stains on this one. But the main thing you're going to know is the backing. The majority of National Biscuit Company trolley cards have National Biscuit Company You Need a Bakers on the back of them. And as you can see, it's printed. This one has had tears in it at some point in time, and it has tape on it as well. But as you can see from the back, it does. It's, it's been the variation in color on the backing. It's been stained where it's been nailed at some point in time, where some has been exposed to the light. That's one of our trolley cards. The next I'd like to show you is a Rikon biscuit. Uh, very, very old. You very seldom see this one. With This is from September of 1927. Uh, be beautiful trolley cards. And from this one, there are some pinholes in this one as well. You can see them. You might not be able to see them on the camera. But when you turn this over here is another giveaway. Besides National Biscuit Company, they also put striping on the back. Yeah. And that is another way that they used uh, to show that this belonged to Nabisco. There was stripes on the back, or they said National Biscuit Company, as I showed you on the Tell previous the card. The and that is Rikon Biscuit. The third one Beautiful. needs no introduction. It is Master Zuzu, it and it, what is unusual about it, it also had a price on the product of five cents. Truly beautiful card. Uh, but there again, it does show wear. As you can see, some of the cardboard is flaking. That's showing you the age. That's why I said on that previous trolley card that was framed, buyer beware, because a trolley card that old would not have a perfection such as that. Let me show you the back of this one, which is again unusual. This is one that is a plain back. But if you can see, you will see wear spots, age spots, taping. It is showing its age. Therefore, you know it's going to be an antique oh. trolley card. Read it, and this one again says, Zuzu. Ginger Snaps National Biscuit Company. It's the inner seal, one of the very first. Five cents National Biscuit Company. Truly gorgeous card. Now let me put that one down. And they're all 11 by 21, just for everybody's information. Here again, here is another Rikon, a little different than the one I previously showed you. And it's made from a Novel combination of nourishing grains, National Biscuit Company. If you will notice, there again, watermarks at the bottom. There are plenty of nail holes where it's been nailed up. In fact, they go all the way across. Truly beautiful card. I like it when they have they show their age. A lot of people, again, don't like cards like this, but I do. I think it shows their character. And this one is dated... Uh, April 1928. There again, if you turn it around, it's going to show the striping on the back. You'll know it's an original card, and it is a truly beautiful card. Another one, and we just got this one. I think it's I think it's really neat. Uh, Charlie is a big fan of the oyster shucker. That's what we like to call him on the oysterettes box. And when we found this, this is as is. There are tears in here. There are nail holes. Uh, it's truly a beautiful card. The date on this one is, the corner is off on this card, but I'm guessing probably about 1927. Uh, oyster, the Oyster Shucker, like I said, is one of Charlie's favorites. And we were very happy to get this. But I'll show you the back, and you can tell it is truly a very fragile card. This one even has buckling of the paper in the back. But to, there again, a lot of people, that would be a concern to them. I don't think so. I think it just adds character to it. 
now. Let me show you another oysterette. Now, this one does not have the oyster shaker on it, beautiful. but it has a beautiful, beautiful picture of an oyster on it. And it says National Biscuit Company on the bottom. The date is 1923, and it said oysters on the half are better on the whole, or with oysterettes on the side. The oyster cracker. Truly a beautiful card, I think. There again, it's not perfect. You're going to see some tearing, some crazing, some holes in it as well. And again, if you'll turn it around, you're going to see the back has the stripes on it that shows it is an original trolley card. Next one is a Fig Newton card. If you, This is a pretty well-preserved card. Doesn't have too much damage on it. What gives it away, though, it does have a shading on it where this has been laying where partial of it was laying in the sun, the rest was out, uh, out of the light, and therefore you're getting that little block that shows a different coloration in it. But this is truly a good looking card, considering. And uh, the date on this one is 1921. And beautiful card. And again, on the back, and I'll flip it for you, it shows the striping on the back. So you're going to know... Kennedy, Kennedy Biscuit. And then you're going to know that it is an original. Here again, here is another beautiful oh, card. Beautiful. I have had this for a long time. It again, you will see it is not perfect. You're going to see some chipping of the cardboard. But the major part of it is in beautiful condition. And it is a Christmas card, so therefore you know I'm going to love it. Uh, it's for Nabisco Sugar Wafers. Uh, the majority, A lot of uh, the ones that I have that are Nabisco Sugar Wafers are Christmas related. I've got quite a few. One, a couple of them are done on a Christmas tree. The box is laying in the tree. And you have the antique Christmas ornaments around it. And also I have one that has the candles that you used to burn on the tree. Read, read. So this is beautiful because it's got a stocking. Read, read. And this one is very, very unique because it is a plain back, but there is original patterns of wallpaper left on the, the back of the card where the card was stuck to a wall as insulation and they wallpapered right over the card. And so we have remnants of wallpaper, which are little rosebuds, all over the card. So that is another, another one of the trolley cards. Here again, here's another one that's premium soda cracker. And it's a blue ribbon winner. And that was the, the blue ribbon uh, saltine, they used to call it. And the date on this one is 1928. And what is unique about this card, there again, you're going to see some imperfections on the card. This one is, this one is pretty solid, but you do see some imperfections in the edges on the cardboard. This one, if you turn it around, it does say National Biscuit Company United Bakers, but there is a little unique thing on this one. It was personalized. It was left as a... Um, a, me a, a, a memo to someone who was not at home. It says, it was written on, and it says, we were up to visit you today. It was kind of late. We got here at 2.30 p.m., but PJ had to try out his new Ford, so we got started late. We leave now at 5 o'clock. Come down soon. Mr. and Mrs. PJ uh, Pedersen Mr. and Mrs. Henry Weber. It was written on to let the people know that they stopped by to visit and the people were not at home. And they left this trolley card out to let them know that they weren't at home. So I think that's pretty unique. The next one we have is a Unita biscuit. It's gorgeous, perfectly gorgeous. It has the Unita kid on the side and he has a box of the famous you need a biscuit crackers in his hand and it says you need a biscuit the world's best soda cracker 
National Biscuit Company Unita Bakers. There again, this trolley cart is not perfect. It does have water staining and it does have chipping of the cardboard. But if you turn it around, it does have National Biscuit Company Unita Bakers. And the next one we want to show, Charlie wants me to show another one that's Christmas. One of my favorites, it's Santa Claus. I love Santa Claus, as a lot of people know. And this one is truly a beautiful card. Holiday treats, and it's Barnum's Animal Crackers and Nabisco Sugar Wafers. I was saying earlier that the majority of times Nabisco Sugar Wafers are uh, Christmas-related. And this one truly is. And Barnum's Animal Crackers, as a lot of people might or might not know, they used to hang these on the Christmas tree for the kids at Christmas time, and that would be their treat. Besides getting their stockings full of nuts and oranges and candy. And the release date on this one, December of 27. And so it is truly a gorgeous piece. And there again, we have shown this on the back, showing Nabisco and National Biscuit Company on the back. You see it from the front. And if he can take that one for me. Next. Let me get this one before it gets hurt. Let me finish talking about these. This one is You Need a Biscuit. Beautiful card. A cooling lunch. It has some, some crazing in it on the cardboard. It does have, have some tears and holes, but it only gives a character. It's a beautiful, beautiful card, I think. There again, this one is plain, but if you turn this one around, you can see the wear on the back of it. The, 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 the light has affected it. It is laid across something where you do have the water staining, but it is truly a beautiful card. And then we have the premium soda cracker, the blue ribbon saltine. Made makes a fine sam makes fine sandwiches. This one showing uh, jelly in between two premiums, and it is truly a beautiful card. The date on that is showing 1926. Beautiful card. It does have crazy. Soy salty. It's soiled on the bottom. It does have some some tearing. So therefore, you're not getting a perfect card. But when you reverse it, it does show that it is a true trolley card. It says National Biscuit Company. You need a baker's. Beautiful. Beautiful card. Then we have a Nabisco Sugar Wafer. This one I like because it is not Christmas oriented. It does show a lady's hand uh, picking up a Nabisco sugar wafer, and this is what they look like in the in the tin, and it was a paper overlay. Beautiful, beautiful card. It does show the holes in it from where it was nailed up. This one has the striping on the back, and I'll show you that. Beautiful card as well. What date was it? Now I want to show you the really really nice one that we got. This is from a friend of ours who passed away uh, a year ago, a very good club member, um, and he had a collection and they auctioned it off and we were truly fortunate to get this card. Uh, you need a biscuit. Uh, this is a beautiful card. This one is in really, really nice shape. Uh, beautiful card. It's uh, inner seal. You need a biscuit. When appetite suggests something good, when health dictates something nourishing, when bodily strength demands something sustaining, in short, when you're hungry, you need a biscuit. It's a beautiful, beautiful card. This one does not have a lot of damage. It does have a couple of pinholes up here at the top. And the date on it is 19... I can't very well, I think it's 1919. Oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful card. This is one of those where uh, it does show on the back. It just shows the striping on the back, but therefore you know it's a, uh, an original card. It's a gorgeous card and we were fortunate to get it. Yeah. 
Merry Christmas. Now, Charlie has a, a Christmas one, too, he wanted me to show. It's similar to the one I showed you earlier with the stocking. This one, Holiday Treats. You're going to see nail holes in here. You're going to see some chipping of the, the cardboard. But it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. It dates December 23, 1923. Sugar wafers and, again, Barnum's Animals. And if you'll notice the stocking with the fruits and the nuts the, that the kids used to get for Christmas. Over a bit beautiful, here. beautiful, move beautiful. It to, move it to the side there a little bit. I'm holding now, it. let's put them both. Yeah, we'll we'll right. put them both together so you see, can see both of them. Percy, they, uh, they, they really advertised heavily. Barnum's Animal Crackers, 1902. They came out with them, put the string on them. The idea was for the kids at that time, who didn't have a lot of money, was to hang them on the tree when it was when, it, when the box was empty. They didn't plan on originally putting these boxes out, but just at Christmas time. But they put these boxes out the first year in 1902. They sold so well that they decided to sell them year round. And since then, they, they've always been the number one animal cracker. The seal on the end of the boxes is a date is a good indication to the date. This one again has sugar wafers and Barnums, just like them. This one is uh, about 1923, and I think that was 23 also, Christmas time. They're gorgeous. Santa is just he screams Christmas. National Biscuit Company put out a lot of absolutely gorgeous trolley cards. They also put out truck posters. The truck posters are rare. Very few exist. We have about seven in our collection. We're going to show them to you later. Percy will be with me. We're going to walk the collection. This is going to be a nice video when we get through with it. You'll see the trolley, you'll see the truck posters, and these are stunning. Coca-Cola, as you know, is a is a big collecting field. The, the items sell for big bucks. They 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 you know they came the druggist invented the Coke back 1800s, and it's a highly collected field. They have nothing on National Biscuit Company when it comes to antique signage. National Biscuit Company and Country Store are, are phenomenal. They're go-togethers. These two pieces are just a couple of what they put out and they're beautiful for Christmas. She's going to show you something behind her in a minute that you will absolutely love. That's a Santa poster. It was a wagon poster. When I say it was a wagon poster, it means it was put out before or not later than 1924. They started with them in the early part of the century, maybe 1907, 1908. They had the old delivery wagons, horse and wagons. They put these posters on the side of the vehicles. And they, when they delivered, you always saw this set ad on the side of them. The one she'll show you from 1924, which is the last year that National Biscuit Company had the horse and wagons. They went into electric trucks in 24, late 24. The one she'll show you has never been used. It was in the in the artist studio. It has gold dust blown on it. National Biscuit Company had their own art department. They did all their own signage. They, they paid these people to, to come up with the ads, and they're absolutely stunning. The original artwork of this company is, is magnificent, and it's beautiful. And this is just a couple pieces. Now, Percy, I want to show you something else, show something else for a second. Put that one down. Here's another piece that's that's National Biscuit. Very, very fragile, and Prissy will tell you what it is. And it dates probably 1900, around 1900. Now, this is a Holland Rusk uh, National Biscuit Company window sign. This is purely paper. It has glue strips on either side where they were moistened, and you put them in the window to advertise the product that was sold in the, in the stores. Could have gone on the doors. It's a beautiful, beautiful Absolutely piece. Gorgeous. Uh, it's 19, I'm guessing, Charlie, 19, before 1910. 1910. It's a gorgeous piece. It does have some blemishes on it, but very few. But you can actually see the glue strips. On either side still even though it has been framed this and we had many many styles of these window uh, posters window advertising they were out many 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 products different types of, of product that was advertised this way very thin paper very fragile now, now a little bit about this Percy before you turn it down this piece Percy hold it right there this piece Holland Rusk came into the company, into National Biscuit Company. They did not develop that product. 
1898, when they merged all these 400 bakers nationwide, Kennedy, American Biscuit Company, United States Baking Company, New York, New York Biscuit, Biscuit Company, small bakers all over the country, went in to form the company called National Biscuit Company. This, co this Holland Rust product came from a predecessor company, a company that went in to form the National Biscuit Company, owned that product. When National Biscuit Company bought them or merged that company into the company, they used a lot of their products. They didn't, they didn't get rid of them. They kept the names on them. Fig Newtons that Prissy showed you earlier came in from Kennedy Biscuit Company. They had the Fig Newton in, before 1898. After National Biscuit Company came in and bought them and they merged in 1898, they kept the Fig Newton. They still have it. It, it was before them. Kennedy Biscuit developed it, the Fig Newton process with the cake out wrapped over it. The, uh, the product is beautiful. When National Biscuit Company took these companies in and merged all these companies, they were very, very concerned with protecting the, the exposure or the brand, name, the brand of, the, of the things they merged into, like Fig Newtons and like Holland Rusk. So they protected it, and when they first took them in years ago, like the Fig Newton one we have, they, they actually kept the name Kennedy on that, on that Fig Newton when they bought them. But at the bottom, in little letters, it said National Biscuit Company. So they didn't take Kennedy off of it for quite a while. We'll show you pieces later that still have Kennedy on them that's early 1898. That's a beautiful piece. Now, Percy, I got one other piece I want you to show them. You got something you want to say before you forget it? No. Okay. That's fine. I got one other piece I want you to show them that, and the story behind it. And this fits right in with what I just was talking about, of products that the company bought and they kept the name of and kept the basic design. This is getting away a little bit, but it's still part of our collecting uh, field, and it's an absolute stunning piece. Tell them about that. Alrighty, this is a paper piece that is framed. It has at the bottom and the top brass uh, Hang hangers what were they on for? it. What they do with it? This was hung from either a wall or the ceiling, and they could advertise the product. Where was this it is at? for no, candy stores. this is a, a candy piece. It says "Ask for Purity Kisses, Gowdy and Kent," and it is in Portland, Maine. This gorgeous. is a paper piece. paper piece that is absolutely gorgeous. The young couple are kissing, and they are sitting in an antique wicker rocker, and beside them you see the box of Purity Kisses, and it is truly, truly beautiful. Now, hold it up for how you watch the children something like hope. Now, if you look at it, Ash for Purity Kisses, everybody likes them. Manufactured only by Gowdy and Kent, Portland, Maine. Purity Kisses. That hung in a drugstore. It hung in a candy shop. It's amazing it has survived. That sign is 140 years old, easy. It's not really a sign, it's a hang down, but it is a sign. It's paper firm at its best. It's, it, it, how it survived, we bought it years ago. Found it online, man had it listed, and we didn't bid on it. It was expensive, it was like 400 bucks, Chris. Yeah. We didn't buy it, and that man was up in Lebanon, where my mom was born in Lebanon, but he lived up there, Marion County, and finally, I, he must have put it back on, or best offer, and we came in and made him an offer on it. What'd you get him for? Uh, I think it was $200. All right, we offered him 200 he took it, he delivered it to us, and w we just love that. Candy was another item that National Biscuit Company had, and they had their name on. So there's a lot of candy pieces out there, Mark National Biscuit Company, that we owned and that we have. Now, when the company took them, bought, brought them into the company, into, into the part of the company, which was Gowdy and Kent, they had crackers also. We got Kent, got a, a, a Gowdy and Kent cracker box sitting right over here. Uh, they, did, they, didn't, they were very, very uh, concerned about the product that they didn't lose buyers because this company bought them and they think they changed it. So they wanted to protect this. So what they did was, Prissy, yeah. show them this. Show them what they made the change on right there. You know what they did. All right. When uh, what it looks like. National Biscuit Company took them over, it became, they changed the name of That's the product by just dropping the S. So instead of Purity Kisses, it became Purity Kiss. And it says on here, the Kent Factory, National Biscuit Company, Portland, Maine. This is a trade card for the same product. Only thing that was added was National Biscuit Company in fine letters down below showing that they purchased the company. But the, the main thing that they wanted to show was the, the purity of this product and the quality of this product has not changed. And therefore, they left this in big letters to Kent. know 
that they were still behind this product 100 percent they still kept the same logo like that it. people would know when they went to the store to purchase it that they were getting the same quality product as the original from the the Gowdy and Kent factory that it did not change and that's the main thing with Nabisco they did not want to to bring down the name of any product at all that they purchased or took over the company. They wanted to let the customer know that this has the original, it's the original taste as the original product when the Gowdy and Kent factory owned it. Now, National Biscuit Company acquired Gowdy and Kent in 1901. So this piece here dates before 1901. And if you look at this piece and you know anything about color and color lithography and the printing processes before 1900, they weren't as good as they became after 1900. So this piece here is before 1901. And if you notice, it's not faded. It's just the quality of the image and the color is not as bright and not as crisp as this piece. This piece dates about 1902. Look at the change in the color once they got past 1900 and started doing a better job on the color of these products. They still, it's basically the same company. It's basically the same candy. They didn't take away from this at all. They wanted them to recognize Purity Kisses. They changed the S. They left Kent Factory on there to tie in with Gowdy and Kent. Same location, Portland, Maine. They still made the candy there. So if you saw one of these pieces, you would know it's original. There's no way they're going to reproduce this piece. Because, first place, it's got the antique brass holders on it, which is good. But it's down here in the corner, in the very corner. It says, the Lakeside Press, Portland, Maine, lithographed the, the, the lithographers. So it's marked. It's, it's original. It's beautiful. This is original, trade card, and they're beautiful. Now... I want Prissy to tell you about one other thing, and it's behind her. And I'm going to let her stand up here in a minute, not yet. And I want her to turn around at the mantel, and I want her to tell you about what she's going to show you up here on the mantel. And we're going to end it there. And the next part of the video you'll see with us, we're going to walk through this collection together because we've got some things that you will absolutely love. I'm just going to turn right here so you can see it, and I'm not going to be in the way. But on the wall that's framed is a uh, Christmas joy. Hold on, honey. i got to adjust it just a minute. Give me a minute. Let me get this so, so the color's better in here. Off? No, it's still on. Hold on. Let me 